Welcome to a new video by Talent Battle. This video has the solutions for the official sample test conducted by TCS NQT for 2021. If you have not started your preparation for the TCS test, then this is the right moment to start it. Only 20 days to go. Give your preparation a boost with various preparation packages launched by Talent Battle. More information is available on it on the link provided in the description. Do not forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel to get timely updates about exam patterns, syllabus, exam dates, preparation strategies and YouTube live sessions. Also, you can join our Telegram channel for more updates. So now, let's start with solutions to the questions. The value of this entire equation lies between and there are four options given over here. If you observe carefully, there are squares over here. If you consider 6.43 as A and 5.18 as B, Okay, we can mark some points over here. This is B. Okay, this is A. If you observe it is 10.36 which is double of 5.18. So, you, you get 2B over here. Okay, and we have uh, 2.59. Okay, and 5. Point, this is B by 2 over here. Because 2.5 and 2.5 comes out to be what? 5. And 0 0.09 into 2 is 0 0.18. So, this is B by 2. What do we get over here? So it is like B gets cancelled, we have B cube over here. So there is a chance that we must get A cube over here. So if you observe this 41.3449, this can be considered as 6.43 square. Okay, 6.5 square sort of, it is like 6.43 square comes out to be uh, 41.3449. There is no need to check whether this is square or not. Okay, we'll, uh, the reason is because if they are given such a sum and such difficult values, that means that some simple answer should be there. Okay, so there is a very good chance that this becomes a square, right, which is square of 6.443. Next, if you observe over here, it is 33.30. If you, if you get, you have a square over here, b square over here. So what is missing over here? Either 2ab is missing, okay, or some multiplication of both a and b is missing. If you observe, it is 33. 6 fives are 30, okay, already 33 is given, 33 point something. We have already reached 30 point something because of 6 into 5. So it cannot be 2ab, otherwise it would have been 60 point something, right? So this must be plain a into b, right? Another way to look at it is 8 into 3 is 24, so 4 is in the end. Then 8 into 4 is, uh, so this gives us the clue that this must be a product of these two, ab. So what we can write over here is a square plus ab plus b square would be divided by a multiplied by a square minus 2b into b by 2 into b. Okay, this gets cancelled out and what do we get is a square plus ab plus b square divided by a cube minus b cube. Now we know the formula of a cube minus b cube so we are going to substitute it. Let's put it over here. What do we get over here is a cube minus b cube is a minus b into a square plus ab plus b square. So this bracket gets cancelled out and what we have is 1 upon a minus b. That comes out to be 1 upon 6.43 minus 5.18. On subtraction, what do we get over here is 1.25, okay? 1 upon 1.25, that comes out to be 1000 upon 125. So 125 ones are 8, uh, this, no, uh, it is 100 upon 125. Really sorry, it is 100 upon 125. 25 fives are, 25 fours are, that comes out to be 0 0.8. Now 0 0.8 lies between option B, that is 0 0.5 and 1. A's capital exceeds B's capital by 20.5%. B invests his capital at 20% per annum for 3 years. Interest compounded annually. At what rate percent per annum must A invest his capital at simple interest so that at the end of 3 years, both get the same amount in INR correct to one decimal place? This means that after 3 years, what happens is whatever amount which B gets based on compound interest will be same as amount got by A based on simple interest. Okay. First, let us assume that B invests rupees 100, right? So, what will be A's investment? It will be B's investment plus 20.5% more. So, 20.5% of what? 20.5% of B itself. So, B plus 20.5% of B. So, A's value will be what? 100 rupees plus 20.5% of 100 is 20.5 rupees. So, how much is the capital of A? We'll write it over here. It is 120.5 rupees. Okay. Now, first B invested in compound interest. Let us try to find out how much did B invest. B invested 100 rupees. Rate of interest is how much? 20% per annum. And the time period is 3 years. Let us calculate the interest paid by compound interest paid by B. 
After the first year, compound interest paid by B will be 20% of 100, that is 20 rupees. After the second year or in the second year, interest will be same on 100 rupees, 20 rupees is the compound interest plus interest on interest, 20% on 20 rupees also, that comes out to be 4 rupees. Next, in the third year, 20 rupees on 100 rupees, then on this 20 rupees again 20%, that is 4 rupees. Then on this 20 rupees again 4 rupees. And on this 4 rupees, he will be paying 0 0.16 rupees. What I will do is I will write it over here, 0 0.16 rupees, right? It is on this 4 rupees 20 by 20%. So total interest paid will be what? 20 plus 20 plus 20 60, 64, 68, 72, 72.16 rupees. So the amount that B receives after 3 years is rupees 100 plus 72.16 which is the compound interest that is rupees 172.16. Now what they have given is that this amount has to be received by A after 3 years as per simple interest. So A is going to get this much amount. Amount is given by the principal amount of A which is 120.5 okay principal plus simple interest of A. It is given by 120.5 is the principal amount. Uh, formula. What is the formula for simple interest? I'll write over here. Simple interest is uh, principal into time period into rate of interest divided by 100. Time period is 3 years. The rate of interest we don't know. We have to calculate divide by 100. So 172.16 minus 120.5 on subtraction what do we get is 52.3. That we get as 120.5 into 3 into R by 100. Now you will feel that this is really tricky and problematic to divide. Absolutely not. Just pay attention what we do over here. We have 5230 because I took 100 over here divided by 120.5 into 3 okay would be equal to R. Now this is known as approximation what I am going to do. We know that it is easier to divide by 120 instead of 120.5 correct. So I will ignore this 0.5. Also over here if you check out the options are really very close to each other okay. Really very close to each other 14.2, 14.5, 13.8, 15.2. So we need to be really exact with the answer but uh, dividing or removing 0.5 or 0.25 here and there it is fine. If you try to remove 1 or 2 here and there then the answer might change a lot. So 120 I will consider. So what I will get over here is 500, 5230 divided by 120 into 3 that will be equal to the rate of interest. This gets cancelled. 12 ones are uh, 12 fours are 48 okay. Uh, no it would be yes 12 fours are 48 it would be then it is like 43 then 12 threes are 36 and we have 7 over here 70 and then it is going to come out to be 12 fives are 60 and then 10 hundred then 12 eights are 96 and so on. So what do I have is 43.58 divided by 3 will be the rate of interest. So 3 ones are 3 then 13 3 fours are 12 then uh, 15 fives are okay and then what I 15 and 3 2s are 6. So we have to revise it to single decimal. So this is an even number so remove it and less than 5. So rate of interest comes out to be 14.5 percent okay. Option comes out to be option C. Even if you try to do this on calculator you will still get the answer round about like 14.46 or 47 or 43 something like that which when you round it off comes out to be 14.5 or it is closer to 14.5 than 14.2 that is the reason we choose 14.5 as the answer. Trains A and B start moving at the same time from stations X and Y respectively towards each other on parallel tracks. After passing each other A and B take X hours and 8 hours to reach Y and X respectively. If the speed of B is 25% more than that of A then what is the value of X? First let us understand the question okay and then we will solve it. There are multiple ways to solve it. I will just show you two ways okay. One is using a formula and one is using a simple common sense speed distance time formula. Okay let's start. This is station X, this is station Y. A starts from here and B starts from here. So they meet at some point, let us say over here. After that what happens is uh, over here A has come and B has come. After meeting or immediately passing each other, A is going to take X hours to reach Y and B is going to take 8 hours to reach X. Okay. Now over here we don't know what is the distance from, let the meeting point be Z. We don't know XZ distance, we don't know ZY distance. But we can for definitely sure say that uh, over here B speed of B is 25% more than that of A that I have given okay. So speed of B is more than A. So speed of B and speed of A marked by SB and SA okay. Speed of B is more than speed of A. Let the speed of A be 1. What will be speed of B? It is 25% more that is 1 plus 25% more. 25% of what? 25% of speed of A. 
that is 1 plus 25 percent of 1 that comes out to be 1 plus 0.25 that is 1.25 okay so speed of b is what 1.25 speed of a is what 1 now pay attention over here very easy we don't know this distance z to y but what we know is speed of a and time for uh, which a was traveling over here a took x hours to travel the distance z y so the distance z y will be what distance will be speed into time so distance will be s a speed of a into x that is 1 into x that comes out to be x kilometers okay this is the distance z y now we don't know the distance x z we already know b travels this distance x z in 8 hours so distance x z will be what distance is speed into time again speed of b into time taken by b to travel the distance is 8 hours now this is 1.25 into 8 that comes out to be 10 kilometers okay total distance x y comes out to be what x plus 10 kilometers fine but we are not concerned with it now comes the real thing very easy thing both of them start at the same time both of them meet at this point z that means time for which they both were traveling is same both starting at the same time and both meeting at the same time okay at same point means both of them were traveling for the same amount of time formula for time is distance upon speed distance traveled by a upon speed of a will be equal to distance traveled by b upon speed of b okay now over here what is the distance traveled by a a has traveled distance xz so that is nothing but 10 kilometers so what i get is 10 upon s of a and distance traveled by b is x kilometers upon b so what we want is that what is the value of x we want now what is the speed of a 1 so i have 10 upon 1 what is the speed of b 1.25 1.25 x comes out to be 12.5 answer is option c now the other formula way to solve the question is there is a direct formula whenever such numerical appears that after meeting a is taking x hours or some hours and b is taking 8 hours or some hours to cross the distance then speed of a upon speed of b is directly given by under root of y upon x where y is time taken by b okay time taken by b after passing each other after passing each other and x is equal to time taken by a to reach the destination after passing each other both these times okay after passing each other now over here what is going to be s a upon s b would be equal to under root of b takes how much time 8 and a takes x hours pay attention it is a speed of a is in the numerator and over here time of a is x in this in the denominator it is exactly reverse and a square root sign is there also speed of b is 25 percent more than a so i'll continue over here uh, speed of b is 25 percent more of a that is 1.25 times of a okay that would be under root of 8 upon x so this gets cancelled i'll write on the top 1 upon 1.25 will be equal to under root of 8 upon x right so squaring both side uh, what we'll have uh, what we'll have uh, no there's no need of squaring over here it will it will get get uh, cancelled over here so it is going to be 1 upon 1.25 will be equal to under root of uh, x uh, so this what i'm going to write it as uh, wait a second i'll write over here 100 upon 125 so 25 fours are and 25 fives are will be equal to under root of 8 upon x now i'll square i'll get 16 by 25 will be equal to 8 upon x so 8 twos are and x comes out to be 12.5 same answer okay so either you go by this formula okay right what is y over here time taken by b to reach the destination after passing a okay or the meeting point and what is x time taken by a uh, uh, to reach the destination after passing the meeting point right you can use the formula directly you can get the answer over here speed is given so it is like this unknown can be found out or you can use the basic formula that time required for both of them time for which both of them are traveling is the same for the data okay marks obtained is given below 10 below 20 below 30 below 40 below 50 number of students are given if x is the class mark of the modal class and y is the upper limit of the median class then the value of 2x plus y is now this question is actually absolutely easy only thing is that the table which is given is in a slightly different format marks obtained are below 10 that means 0 to 10 whoever has got there are 5 students who have got 0 to 10 marks okay below 10 below 20 means 0 to 20 it does not mean 11 to 20 below 20 so 0 to 10 is also below 20 that means that these 5 students are included in this 16 
So below 20, 16 students are there. That means that there are 5 students who have got below 10 and plus extra students who have got between 11 to 20. So total 16 students. Same way below 30 means 0 to 30. These 28 students got marks below 30. That means there are 5 students who got 0 to 10. 16 got 0 to 20 or uh, sorry 11 to 20 not 16 some of them got between 11 to 20 and some of them got 21 to 30 and total of all this comes out to be 28 same way 0 to 40 and same way 0 to 50 so this is not this kind of table is not useful for us to get the answer so how we will convert the table to 0 to 10 then we are going to have like 10 to 20 then we are going to have 20 to 30 then we are going to have 30 to 40 and 40 to 50 okay so over here number of students this is what the marks obtained then these are the number of students this number of students is also known as frequency this frequency which is given over here it is cumulative frequency cumulative frequency means addition i'll tell you what cumulative frequency means now 0 to 10 that is below 10 marks how many students are there 5 below 20 16 students are there correct 16 students was the in these 16 students these 5 students are included. So over here, there must be 16 minus 5 equal to 11 students. 11 students got between 10 to 20. 5 students got between 0 to 10. So total comes out to be 5 plus 11 is 16. Okay. Next, below 30, 28 students are there. So over here, below 30, 28 students are there. Out of that, 5 got how much? 0 to 10. 11 got how much? 10 to 20. So how many got 20 to 30? 28 minus 11 is 17 minus 5 is 17 minus 5 comes out to be 12 or other way to look at it is out of 28 16 got below 20 so out of 28 16 got below 20 so from 21 to 30 or 20 to 30 students are 28 minus 16 that is 12 same way below 40 42 students are there out of that 28 got below 30 so between 30 to 40 are 42 minus 28 14 students how did I get this 42 minus 28 okay and over here 72 minus 42 I am going to get 30 students okay below 50 are 72 students out of that 42 got below 40 so 40 to 50 are 72 minus 40 to 30 this is the normal frequency this one is cumulative frequency so normal frequency is much more useful than cumulative frequency now comes the total what is the total frequency it is generally denoted by n it is 5 plus 11 plus 12 plus 14 plus 30 that comes out to be 72 which is given over here okay now comes what is the median class okay before going to upper limit of median class i'll go in for the modal class okay what is the modal class over here modal class is the class which has the highest frequency so i'll write over here modal class class with highest frequency okay this is highest frequency right over here if you observe this class 40 to 50 has highest frequency of 30 so modal class is 40 to 50 how to find the class mark class mark is nothing but sort of average okay so class mark of the class modal class 40 to 50 will be uh, low it is given by formula upper limit plus lower limit divided by 2 okay so it comes out to be 40 plus 50 divided by 2 it is not 40 minus 50 it is 40 to 50 okay that comes out to be 90 by 2 it is 45 so what we have is value of x is 45 correct now let's move on to the median class right how to find median class very easy value of n is 72 correct 70 uh, take a look over here 72 divided by 2 that is average okay or 72 divided by 2 is 36 we have to find in which class this 36th student is okay in which category or which class out of all these the 36th student is let us check out first five students are over here okay then 11 students are over here so 16 students are or the 16th student will be in this category next 11 plus 12 is 20 or uh, 16 plus 12 is 28 28th student who is there he is in this category 28 plus 14 is 42 42nd student is in this category so 36 student must lie in between so 28th student to 42nd student are in this category so 36th student will also be in this class or this category so the median class is what median class will be 30 to 40 do not consider that median is 36 that is the reason it will lie between 30 to 40 no find the 36th student where it is 
it is over here between 30 to 40. It lies in this class in this category. So we have 30, uh, 30 to 40 is the median class. Upper limit. This is the lower limit of median class. Upper limit of median class. So y will be 40. So now what is the value of 2x plus y? That is going to be 2 into 45 plus 40. 90 plus 40 comes out to be 130. Answer is option C. Study the following pie chart and answer the question. Breakup of the total number of employees of a company in its five offices in cities A, B, C, D and E is given. Total number of employees is 2400. If one third of the total number of employees of the company in offices in cities B and D are shifted to offices in cities C and E in the ratio 2 is to 3, the difference between the number of employees in offices in cities C and E is. First of all, we'll target this part. Okay. One third of the total number of employees of the company in offices in cities B and D. Now over here in this entire pie chart, degrees are given and total number of employees is 2400. For a circle, total degrees is 360 degrees. So 360 degrees corresponds to 2400. That is the total number of employees in the company. Okay. In all the five cities. Next comes, what are the total number of employees in cities B and D? Offices in cities B and D. For B, it is 108 degrees. For D, it is 72 degrees. So what do we get is 108 degrees plus 72 degrees. That is 180 degrees. So if 360 degrees is equal to 2400 employees, then 180 degrees, which is half will be corresponding to 1200 employees. Okay. So 1200 employees are there in offices B and D. Out of this 1200, one third, one third of this 1200 are shifted. So 400 employees are shifted. Okay. Now these 400 employees are shifted where? Now let us come to the second part. Shifted to offices in cities C and E in the ratio 2 is to 3. So C and E in the ratio 2 is to 3. Okay. C is to E. So this 400 has to be divided into two parts. 2 is to 3. Okay. These two parts go to office C. These three parts go to office E. How to calculate it? Very easy. How many employees does C get? What is the ratio corresponding to C? 2. Ratio number is 2. Divide by 2 plus 3. Total multiplied by how many employees are there? 400. Okay. So that comes out to be 2 into 400 divided by 5. 5 8s are 80s are that comes out to be 160. So C is going to get 160 employees. Fine. And over here E is going to get 400 minus 160. That comes out to be 240 employees. Right. Our total comes out to be 400. Now we have to find out difference between the number of employees in offices in cities C and E. Originally, how many employees are there in C and E? C has 63 degrees of employees. So what do we have? C will be having how much? 63 degree employees. So 360, uh, 360 degrees is 2400. I'll write over here. 360 degrees corresponds to 2400. So 63 degrees will correspond to how much? X or I'll write it C. Okay. So C is going to be what? 2400 into 63 divided by 360. This gets cancelled out. 6, 6 are, 6, 4, 40 are. Okay. So what we have is 40 into 63 by 6. So 3, 2 are and 3, 21 are, 2 into 20. So that comes out to be 20, uh, 40 to 420 employees. Okay. Plus these three, uh, 160. So total goes out to 580. Fine. Now let's see how many employees are there in E originally. So 360 degrees for 2400. So E has how much? 36 degrees. So total how many employees? Let us say E. You will cross multiply this and you are going to get 2400 into 36 divided by 360. This gets cancelled out. 6 6 are. Uh, okay. This gets cancelled out completely. It comes out to be 240 itself. Okay. So E has 240 plus 240. Now that is 480 employees. What is the difference between them? 100 employees is the difference. Okay. The difference. This is the answer. Right. The difference between the number of employees in offices in cities C and E is 100. Option B.